And welcome back, everybody, to The Cube, SiliconANGLE's premier TV production, where we go out to the top tech events to uh, separate the signal from the noise, bring you the information on the uh, technologies and trends in enterprise IT that you're looking for. Uh, we're here, of course, at .com, the Splunk user conference uh, in Las Vegas with the Cosmopolitan Hotel. We are wrapping up the show. Jeff Frick is here with my, uh, my co-host from SiliconANGLE, and I'm Jeff Kelly from wikibon.org, and Jeff, we've had a quite, a, quite, two, quite a long two days, but a lot of great content, a lot of great uh, conversations. Um, what stood out for you? What were some of the, the key takeaways you got from the last yeah, couple I, of days? I, I think it's, uh, it's been, it has been a great show, and uh, you know, today we had kind of a different perspective because we had a couple outside analysts and we had some press guys, and uh, some of the things that stood out for me is, is one, we just got continual validation of kind of the land and expand strategy that Splunk has done, and you see it with other, with other technologies. Um, as well, Atlassian, uh, Jira comes to mind, where you make it really easy for people to try a product and, and get value, and then and then expand the, the use of it. I, I think that's pretty pretty interesting. The other thing that's that's kind of an extension of that is where you know you start with a very specific application, and then you um, it grows and, and and literally grows as the guy said. People looking over their shoulder. Well, yeah, I mean it. it it's certainly you know there. The, what makes a technology really powerful is, of course, you know, what it's built to do, but the fact that you can extend that technology to do other things just increases the amount of value you can get out of that investment. Yeah. And we're seeing that that's core to, to big data. I mean, we've, we've heard it uh, all day today and yesterday with uh, Splunk users, uh, you know, downloading the product for free, starting in the uh, data center, monitoring, analyzing what's going on in their infrastructure, and then starting to extend that out to connect all that data to business problems whether it be you know, marketing problems or sales issues. So you know, the more that you can do that, the, the, the more valuable your investment becomes. And you were definitely seeing that. When we also saw that in the Hadoop world with our conversation with Arun from Hortonworks. Same, same strategy and same, same idea. So I think that's one of the common themes that, uh, throughout the big data kind of portfolio we're seeing uh, with Hadoop and Splunk and some other approaches. So uh, that's key. I think another thing that struck me was the iterative approach that everyone seems to be uh, taking here at the conference uh, in terms of their use of Splunk. It's not just ask a question and then sit back and wait for an answer. It's ask a question, get an answer, ask another question, go down this road, go down that road, and it's very much a process. Yeah. And you need tools that are agile and th that allow you to do that. Uh, you know, the old method of a very structured, very uh, locked down data warehouse really isn't, it doesn't work anymore uh, for a lot, of, a lot of problems. There are some problems where that is, you know, the data warehouse is the answer. But uh, when you're trying to iterate and trying to do these ad hoc queries and find answers to questions you just thought of, right, uh, right. kind of out of the blue, you need these more agile types of technologies. So uh, that really struck me as being one of the, the important developments we're seeing in, in the big data landscape. Right, well this opens up the opportunity to find out, you know, as, as I think John said, you don't know what you don't know but the way that you find out that you don't know what you don't know is you start exploring and, and you go down a path and you you know you ask a question you get an answer that that begets another question another question another question which is which is very interesting because it's kind of analogous to how a lot of us surf the web right how you get information just in your in your everyday life you know you may go to the local newspaper you read up on some story which then links to something else which links to something else and and six clicks from now you don't know you know where you are maybe has right. nothing to do with where you started and mm -hmm. and I think uh, our last guest Jason said you know, if you do not have the ability to follow that train of thought and to follow that, that query, uh, if, if you've got to parse that query out to somebody to run an analysis, mm -hmm. by the time it comes back, you know, you're going to lose that train of thought. You, yeah. You're never going to have an opportunity to actually start that train of thought. So I thought that was pretty, was pretty insightful. I'm just looking here at some of our, our other guests that we had. Again, the, the, just the fact that there's so much value in this data that heretofore had just been thrown away yeah. uh, based on the fact that you couldn't store it, it was too expensive, you couldn't do anything with it, mm -hmm. and, and really it, it, it's interesting to me this kind of constant evolution of a number of technologies between CPU processing, horsepower, and big mm -hmm. fat pipes, and inexpensive storage, and now really fast storage, that's allowing you to do things at scale, which, which before were just not even in the realm of possibility. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, taking you know, all that data was often seen as a liability, because it was either costing you money to store it, uh, you, had to, you, know, you had to pay to make sure you were storing it in ways that were compliant with regulations, or you were just getting rid of it and not doing anything with it at all. Um, and then, you know, who knows, weeks, months later, you'd be like, wow, I wish we had that data and we could do something with it yeah. now. Whereas now, from a liability, big data makes data really a strategic asset, which is really a, a 
change in thought process as much as technology. So, you know, I think we talked a little bit over the course of the two days of a new way of thinking that big data requires. Right. Um, you know, you, you, data is not something that's just a you know necessary evil that's costing your company money. It's a it's a gold mine sitting there. Right. Uh, you know, but you really need to know how to tap into it uh, and take advantage of some of these new tools, techniques, and ways of thinking to do that. So, yeah, absolutely, some really good stuff here to, uh, today and yesterday at the show. Um, what struck me also, of course, was the community that's going around Splunk. Uh, you know, in big data generally, but specifically around Splunk, we're seeing uh, some really excited people. I mean, the mood here is just uh, really excited, yeah. uh, really happy customers, and that's you know that's certainly how you grow and uh, be successful in business is to make your customers happy, and that's definitely what Splunk's doing based on the feedback we're getting uh, from the show. Yeah, very active, and and again, extending functionality, extending capability via apps uh, developed by third parties for special purposes, and apps developed by third parties just because of stuff that Splunk isn't doing, and and it'll be an interesting. Um, to watch them as they as they move forward, but I think they've pretty well executed to have a solution focus for their go to market and for that initial installation. But really, from a from a product management process, really building out the platform capabilities that will enable this expansion along a number of fronts. I guess I guess my final thought is, while it's fun and cool and sexy to talk about the elevator story, and and, and I think that's kind of neat. And and there's a whole bunch of interesting applications that nobody's thought of yet for big data. Uh, we heard time and time again that the entry point, the, the, the kind of the initial problem that people are trying to solve is really around security, compliance, it's still kind of still in the data center. Mm -hmm. um, there's still some big problems there that, that Splunk is bringing orders of magnitude of improvement uh, and capabilities to solve that just simply weren't there before. Absolutely. Uh, you know, they're doing some really interesting things. You know, the challenge now for Splunk is to continue on that momentum. I mean, they've had a great year as we've talked about over the course of the two days. Um, you know, but they're going to continue to scale. I know they're adding headcount, they're adding customers, uh, and as you do that, obviously new challenges arise as you grow your company. So, uh, you know, they, they are certainly have their work cut out for them, but they are in a great position right now, definitely um, really making a difference in their customers' uh, business. I mean, if you think about, you know, people sometimes talk about big data as a lot of hype, and where, where's the really the, who's really doing it? Where, who's really finding value? Yeah. And it's clear, there's a thousand plus customers here who are finding value in big data every day thanks to Splunk and the technology and approaches that they're, they've adopted in this kind of new era. So um, it's, it's real, uh, there's a lot more work to be done, and uh, you know, Splunk's got a very interesting culture, some really uh, interesting titles yes, among yes, some, of the, some of the Yes, interesting titles, we, we and, found uh, the beef, that's for sure, I yeah. think we, we definitely found the beef. Yeah, so <laughs> interesting, very interesting group, uh, really passionate, definitely, you know, dedicated, uh, and really smart. So, you know, I think the uh, future's looking very bright for Splunk, challenges ahead, but uh, you know, they're in a really great position. Yep. So thanks everybody for watching. We want to we want to thank a few people. We couldn't do this uh, certainly without uh, the help of, among others, uh, Levy Production Systems, who helped us uh, with our equipment, and of course Tom Stillwell over at Splunk, who helped pull this together with us. And in pretty short order, uh, he's he's been man on a mission the last couple of days. So we appreciate all his hard work. Uh, <laughs> the rest Tom of the Splunk there. staff, uh, Tim from the Cosmopolitan Hotel, has really helped us out here in terms of getting situated. And uh, yeah, just you know, Splunk. We want to thank Splunk for sponsoring us, the Cube, getting us here to this great event, uh, letting us really cover, uncover all these great stories uh, around big data, what, what, what customers are doing. Um, coming up, we're going to be uh, taking the Cube to some more events, as, as you can imagine. We're going to be uh, in the big data world. We'll be at the Strata Conference slash Hadoop World. They've merged the two conferences this year, so we'll be at that in October. So definitely keep an eye out for that. And we're also, uh, actually right now we're at a Brocade event. You can catch on siliconangle.tv right now. Uh, so we're going to be very busy. So, you know, keep in touch. Uh, tune in to Silicon Angle TV often. Uh, we've got great content uh, pretty much every day now. So, you know, keep coming back and checking out wikibon.org as well. We've got some good research there uh, around big data. So uh, we look forward to meeting with you again at the next event. Uh, any final thoughts? Final thought, just a big, big shout out to my, uh, to my oh. co-host Jeff here. Uh, it's been a real pleasure working with you. And you. Uh, I think you know, we've had a lot of interviews. We'll have to go back, as, uh, as the football coach in me likes to say, and check the tape. Uh, I think there's a lot of good nuggets uh, yeah. in our own data journey uh, to find a lot of good stuff that, that we've captured over the last couple of days. So we want to, again, thank you for coming. Again, thanks to our host, Tom, who's over there busily uh, texting away, keeping things uh, in control. And we look forward to seeing you next time on theCUBE.